Good day, everyone. This is Pineleaf Neils, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and at the tabletop. And please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Dracula. Hey now, everybody. How's it going? Hello, Drac. And is there any good news today? Uh, there's not much news at all, actually. Because <laughs> oh. if you could be reading our show notes right now, you would see there's not much news at all. Well, then, at least we have a Chronicle to speak about, right? Well, we do. There's always the Chronicle to far back on. Uh, well, issue number 214 uh, of the Chronicle, actually. Oh, oh, what is that head graphic? <laughs> that is, looks like that is from, I want to say, one of the newer quests, uh, the Devil's Gambit quest. I can't remember which quest that's in, though. I would have thought that you would know the Get Devil's Gambit by <laughs> <Yeah>. heart. <laughs> <laughs> Only one certain quest, and it's not in that quest. So Okay. The other ones I haven't ran that much. I ran them a lot, but nothing like Grim and Barrett. Oh, stupid Grim and Barrett. <laughs> anyway, in our Chronicle this week, Slash Back Warrior is featuring builds and events on his YouTube channel. So click over and check out a, a newer person in the DDO community that's uh, making some DDO videos. We have uh, some stuff in the fan side news as well. DDO cast gets sneaky. Episode was all about being sneaky with the most sneakiest guest you can think of, and that would be Sava Jade. So click over and listen to that show. It was an excellent show as always. DDO Gamer is still finalizing his DDO card game rules, so click over and uh, check out to see what he's doing. And I still got to get Jeff on the show to talk about the DDO card game. Oh, I'm right. making a note to myself right now. I know I said that last week, and I didn't do anything about it. This week I'm going to. Yeah, you, you'll bring him in on the news that there is an inundation <laughs> of news, right? Probably. That's probably what will happen. That <laughs> seems to be how it goes. And also, November Muse is continuing her journey through Ataraxia. So click over and read some of the newest fiction from November Muse. And City over on his blog is filking to the Temple of the Six. And I must say he did a great job at this. Uh, when you read it, you just got to put it to the tune of putting on the Ritz. And check it out. It's pretty funny and he did a good job. So good job, City. And that is pretty much it for our Chronicle. Other than, of course, we do have the Chronicle comment of the week. And that is... What would be the least great part about being a coin lord? The least great part? <laughs> mm, let's see. Well, I presume that all those coins that are in your mattress will make your mattress a little bit too hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I kind of went along those lines. I said uh, <laughs> the least great part is all the people that always come up to you and ask for money. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I guess that does make sense also. And or, then, oh, go ahead. I was thinking also having put up with all those um, people who wanted to get quests from you. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> too. Go away, I'm busy right now. <laughs> and the final <laughs> thing in our Chronicle this week, of course, is the screenshot of the week. And that is from Yavul. That is a pretty awesome name. Pays homage to Gary Gygax during the Night Revel celebration in the 294th DDO Screenshot of the Week. All right. <laughs> now, then, let's head into our store sales. And are the store sales at least exciting? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it if depends. You're, if you're into cosmetics, sure, they're exciting. 20% uh -huh. off select cosmetics. The select cosmetic hats, helms. And headwear. Also, you can get uh, select crafting items and augments all at 20% off. So it's a pretty decent sale. Not bad. Ah, oh, so therefore, if this were a Locho sale, Terry Adwin would be really excited. I'm sure she would. <laughs> See, we well, have, have to get her to play DDO for the cosmetics. Hey, there you go. That's right. Tell her you we have cosmetics, too. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Free sample of the week through the 17th is the Gold Seal Elixir of Lesser Healing. You will get 10 of those when you use the coupon code DRINKHEALS, D-R-I-N-K-H-E-A-L-S. And as always, one per account, so choose your server wisely. Well, I guess it's better than Drinking Heals, H-E-E-L-S. <laughs> True. 
All right, let's see what's coming in from the dungeon. And we'll begin to with a review of Volo's Guide to Monsters. Oh, Volo, I tell ya. Uh, right off the bat, as I put in this article I put up over on ddoplayers.com, if you were expecting Volo's Guide to Monsters to be the Monster Manual 2, it's not. It okay. is, but it isn't. It's There is so much more to the book than just the monster section. Um, they do start out, of course, with uh, their obligatory disclaimer that they have in all the books. And do yourself a favor. If you have never read Wizards disclaimers in the uh, the books, read them because they just keep getting better and better. You know, <laughs> this is one of the best ones so far. It reads, Wizards of the Coast does not vouch for, guarantee, or provide any promise regarding the validity of the information provided in this volume by Volothamp Getum. Do not trust Volo. Do not go on quest offered by Volo. Do not listen to Volo. Avoid being seen with him for the risk of b- guilt by association. If Volo appears in your campaign, your DM is undoubtedly trying to kill your character in a manner that can be blamed on your own actions. The DM is probably trying to do that <laughs> anyway, but with Volo's appearance, you know for sure. We're not convinced that Elmist- Elminster's commentary is all that trustworthy either, but he turned us into flumps last time we mentioned him in one of these disclaimers. <laughs> So, yeah, that sets the tone of the book right off. <laughs> Best disclaimer ever. Good job, Wizards. So, if you're not familiar with the Volos Guide from uh, the second edition, what they were is they were a series of guidebooks that were written by Volothamp Getum, uh, also known as Volo. He is a scholar renowned for both getting into trouble and getting adventurers into trouble on his behalf. Of and course. He wrote uh, about many different sections of the Forgotten Realms, many of the monsters. So that's kind of where the idea of the books came. It's kind of a throwback to second edition. The book is 224 pages, uh, starts out with a monster lore section, then goes into some character races that you can play. And then we have our bestiarity, which is our monster manual itself. First off, the monster lore in this book is amazing. Uh, they cover beholders, giants, gnolls, goblins, hags, kobolds, mind flayers, orcs. I learned some things about this that I never knew how a beholder was created. And wow, is it just bizarre. Oh, but was that information from Volo or from well, Elminster? It was from Volo, actually. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. Yes, take it with the like, ocean of salt, yes. But yeah, that's, <laughs> there is just, yeah, the, the first section of the book alone makes the, the book worth it, its purchase because you have that background on monsters. Uh, you have some tips on, like, for the uh, Noel section, they have tips on how to create, like, bands of gnolls, like, which different type of gnolls you will need. They have sample maps of, like, uh, the layers that these creatures would be found in. So that is wonderful for a DM. And I think players will get a lot out of it as well, too. See what character races, and this gives you all sorts of uh, new races that you can play. They flush out uh, the Asimar, Fireblogs, Kinku, Lizardfolks, Tabaxi, which are actually cat creatures, if you did not know. And they have some interesting quirks about them. They'd be fun to roleplay, I think. So some new uh, character race options. Goliaths? And you can play Goliath if you would want. And then, of course, uh, we have our wonderful bestiary section, which is going to give us over 100 pages of new and classic monsters. And uh, some of these were absent from the original Monster Manual that came out for 5th edition. And then some of them kind of flesh out some monsters that were in there as well. But some of the newer creatures we get, we get uh, Cranium Rats. We get a Devourer, which would just be nasty to face. Right. The Whale Snail. The whale Frog Snail. The Kemoth, The Chiron. And, of course, we have the return of everybody's favorite, Vegapygmy. Vegapygmy? And it sounds exactly like what you think it is. When I say Vegapygmy, what do you think? What comes to mind when I say that? Uh, tiny plant-like humanoids? There you go. <laughs> That's what they are. 
Okie dokie. And, and I see we have a return of the bar guests also. Well, yes, of course. Can't get, can't get rid of the bar guests. You can't get rid of those annoying things. So, yeah, this is, um, <laughs> as I said in, in the review that's up on the site, I will go on a limb and say this is the best source book for 5th edition yet. Okay. And that's that's saying a lot, actually, because uh, the Sword Coast Adventures guide was really good. But this is on a whole whole new new level. There was a few things that I didn't like about it. You can go over on the uh, site and read exactly what my two little minor nitpicks about it was. But uh, overall, wonderful book. Great book. Volos Guide to Monsters will be... Uh, it's actually in Wizard Play Network-friendly local game stores now. If you do not have a WPM game store near you, you can get this uh, at other retailers uh, like Amazon and such online on the 15th of November. So tomorrow as we record yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow as we record this. <laughs> so Big, it's not a long wait. <laughs> yep, nope, not a long wait at all. That's a bullet's Guide to Monsters, brand new source book for 5th edition. You also had a little post about the Wizards of the Coast panel at Game Hole Con. Does that mean you were there? I wish I was there. What did ah. So I'm going to make it to Game Hole Con. But no, uh, the fine folks over at the Gaming and BS podcast, which if you're not listening to the Gaming and BS podcast, what is wrong with you? Go subscribe to them. They're awesome. They are the official podcast of Game Hole Con, actually. So they were allowed to record Wizards panel that was held. And it featured Jeremy Croppen, uh, Jeremy Crawford, Christopher Perkins, and Mike Merles. They cover everything from uh, what some kind of background into how they went about putting Volo's Guide to Monsters together, the differences in settings and design. Uh, they also took some uh, QA. They did not announce any new product, though, which usually what? at Game Hole Con, they usually will announce a new product. They did not do that this time. Hmm. And Mike Merles was pretty clear about that up front. He said, if you're expecting a product announcement, we have nothing for you. If during the Q&A section you are going to ask about future products, we will have no answer for you. So they're being a little secretive about what the next uh, storyline is going to be. But they did say, though, Chris Perkins did say during the interview, though, if you go back in the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide... Uh, Curse of Strahd and Storm King's Thunder, you should be able to figure out what the next storyline is going to be, because there is hints in each one of those books. And did you go back to those books to see if you could figure out what those hints were? Yeah, I got nothing. I could okay. <laughs> Nothing jumped out at me, so I have no idea. So yeah. So I guess there's your homework if you want to dig through all those books and come up with some good speculation. Uh, this interview, or I'm sorry, not this interview, this uh, panel runs about an hour and 52 minutes. A little long, but it's very, very informative. Um, it's just always great to listen to these guys talk Dungeons & Dragons. So check it out over on the Gaming and BS podcast page. The Wizards of the Coast panel from Game Hole Con 2016. Maybe the new storyline is the only classic thing that they referenced within their books that has not yet already been turned into a storyline. Hmm. See, now I'm going to have to go back and read. <laughs> With that in mind. Oh, have, have they done their induction speech for the Hall of Fame yet? Yes. Oh, okay, so I guess they won't be announcing it there then. <laughs> All right. Yes, the Dungeons & Dragons has been inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame. Only took 42 years, but right. got, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, which then again, I think we talked about this when we said they were up for maybe could be inducted. Right. Um, I think, think my exact words were, who even knew there was a National Toy Hall of Fame? Yeah. <laughs> but apparently in Rochester, New York, you can find the Strong Museum for Play. And that is the National Toy Hall of Fame. And Dungeons & Dragons was inducted just uh, last weekend, actually. And uh, director of D&D from Wizards, Nathan Stewart, was in there to accept the award on behalf of uh, Wizards and Hasbro. So pretty cool, actually, that, uh, you know, D&D, because we all know how the beginnings of D&D were and, you know, the satanic panic we had of, of the 80s. So it's pretty cool to think that that game that caused all that controversy back in the late 70s through the mid 80s 
is now in the Toy Hall of Fame. And how many were inducted this year? Fisher Price's Little, little People figures and the swing sets, Dungeons and Dragons. All right. Yeah, three sounds about right on the whole yep. thing. Hey, then let's then head off into the One Ring Bundle of Holding. Well, we, we, we have a bundle of holding that holds the one ring in it. That's how heavy it is. <laughs> That's right. It is so heavy, you need a bundle of holding to carry it. Ooh. Of course, everybody knows we're talking about the One Ring role playing game from the fine folks at Cubicle 7. If you would like to jump in on this RPG and you want to get a good deal, I've got the deal for you over on the Bundle of Holding, which is a website similar to like the Humble Bundle for PC games. Bundle of Holding is the equivalent for role playing games where you can get PDFs. And right now they're running a one ring bundle. You can get the starter collection for fourteen ninety five, and that is going to get you the uh, one ring role playing game itself, and the lore master screen, and the guide to Lake Town. And then if you beat the uh, current price threshold, which uh, right now is at thirty three, I'm sorry, thirty sixty seven. You will also get PDFs for The Darkening of Mirkwood, The Heart of the Wild, Rivendell, and Tales from the Wilder Land. So you'll get a ton of books that will get you a lot of game pay for the One Ring role-playing game, which if you have not played it, it is awesome, especially if you're a Tolkien fan. This is kind of what they based the Adventures in Middle-Earth uh, 5e open license project that just came out from them that we reviewed not too long ago. You can look that up on the site. Uh, That was based on their one ring role playing game. Now what style of role playing game is it? I mean, is it a class based one? Is it a skills based one? Is it a, it's class and skill both actually. And it's very, very story driven as you would expect it to be since it's based on, of course, Tolgan. Right. So yes, it's very, very st- story driven and uh, they really stress the whole uh, traveling and adventure aspect of your campaign, which is a little different than most RPGs. Cause you know, most RPGs you're just like, Oh yeah, you arrive at the dungeon or whatever. This well, you actually, you know, will explore the lands of middle earth as you're going to whatever quest that you're doing. Well, considering what happened in the, storyline that most of the story was the travel (laughs) yeah exactly that's exactly and i I think that's kind of why they they stress that so much in the uh, wondering but as of this recording right now you have nine more days to hop in on this uh bundle of holding the wondering edition well that's it from what's coming in for the dungeon so let's see what we placed on our tabletop and we'll begin with Crow's Master Collection is coming from C-M-O-N. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> I saw what you did there. Yes, Crow's Master is just growing and growing and growing. This time they're bringing the spooky with the Cemetery Park figure collection. Going to be 16 new fully painted miniatures. And uh, the cool thing about them, though, is each are going to be uh, compatible with uh, the Crossmaster Arena 2.0 Crossmaster Quest games. And also, you will get a card in there, or a uh, character card and a digital code. So if you're playing Crossmaster Arena on the computer, you can play the figure that you buy in your pack as well. These are uh, twelve ninety nine a pack, and they're going to be available soon at your friendly local game store. Very well. And I have a question for you. What would happen if Alice ran into the Munchkins? You would get the brand new board game Munchkin Wonderland. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, people are saying, <laughs> what? Another Munchkin game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, Steve uh, Jackson just... As I said before the show, I love Munchkin. I love Steve Jackson games. Don't get me wrong. But there's got to be a point where they got to quit slapping Munchkin on some stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean <laughs> seriously. And and this one's a little different, too, because you remember uh, not too long ago, we talked about how there was a exclusive for Walmart for Munchkin. And yeah. there was an exclusive for Walgreens. Well, this new board game is exclusive to Amazon. What? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the, Steve Jackson's been doing a lot of exclusives lately, but you, this basically is exactly what Pine Leaf alluded to. It's Alice in Wonderland, Munchkin style. You step through the looking glass and travel the Wonderland as the White Rabbit are as Alice. It's got all the jokes, the monster bassing, and treasure seeking of Munchkin, of course, with a brand new board and a simplified rules, which makes it great to teach to your kids. So they're kind of aiming this at kids. Uh, two to six players, ages six and up is what they say. It's available now, twenty nine ninety five. But once again, only on Amazon. Uh, with what porpoise? <laughs> wow, Pine Leaf, really? Okay, okay. You, you obvious. You, you don't remember that joke from Alice in Wonderland, I guess. I guess not. No. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Then let's then head off into a little memory from, I think it was last week or the week before, where I had played a bit of Elder Sign. Yes. Yes. Well, then it sounds like that they have announced a new expansion for Elder Sign, and it's a bit of a wet one. You just can't keep Cthulhu down, can you? No, no, and it, it, well, it looks like that if you do keep Cthulhu down, he'll pull you down with him. <laughs> that should be well. Yes, this is a new expansion for Elder Sign called the Omens of the Deep, coming from Fantasy Flight Games. This uh, is based off of the. Sorry, I just lost my place uh, on yeah, the page. Uh, the Call of Cthulhu scenario in Elder Sign Omens, which I have not yet played that one, but yes, thank you. It, it's but based on what the teaser says in Omens, it's a three parter. So that means I'm not exactly sure what they mean by a three parter yet, but I expect this to be a bit of a campaign rather than just a single than a single game. And Fantasy Flight did say, too, that it's going to borrow some of the mechanics that they used in the Omens of Ice expansion, which was the last expansion. Okay. And they didn't give a release date or a price for this yet, either. So stay tuned, and we will let you know when it's out. But more Elder Sign coming, Omens of the Deep. Ooh. Then let's see what we did this week in gaming. And Drac, what have you been up to? I actually did not do a lot. I had like a crazy week in real life so i didn't play much i did manage to get my daily runs of devil's gambit grim and barrett in still no quiver drops of Nobody course stopped. not of course not and really other than what i did with you that's all i did in game i didn't play like ddo hardly at all this week what did you at least do something with dungeons and dragons 5e that i did at least i did get some dungeons and dragons in though got the weekly playthrough of storm Cube thunder which of course uh as many of you know by now i am running it for my friend and his two kids they did make it out of the dripping caves you remember that's where they ended up they successfully got out of there and now they're currently on their way to the city of tribor and uh, they are being taken there via a Storm Giant's floating castle. So how cool what? is that? What? <laughs> yeah, they got out of the Dripping Caves, and uh, they had just got the quest, so they knew what they were supposed to do next. They are supposed to go to Tribor, and they found out it was going to be a 10 days journey, so they were getting ready to hit the road, per se, and then this big, giant, floating castle came above them, and this clouds came down that formed a staircase. And they figured out, well, I bet we're supposed to walk up those stairs. And then they met a friendly storm giant. They found out some things that are going on, which I won't spoil for you, that are going to run Storm King's Thunder, or that's going to play in it. And off they're going. So their 10-day journey is now only going to take five days because they're being escorted on a storm giant's floating castle. So that's pretty sweet. And my friend's, ki- my friend's kids did learn a very valuable lesson, though. What's that? What happens when you poke a black pudding? Poke a black pudding. Yes. I will suspect that it's nothing nice. It was not nice. They did manage to kill it, but yeah. And they freaked out a little because that's the first time they've ever fought a black pudding. So Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so yeah, almost had it. I had one down to death saves, actually. Almost oh. killed another. Oh, well. And then I did find out that it's not just clerics that I insanely dislike, because everybody knows my my hatred of 5e clerics is legendary at this point. We can now add familiars to that list. Uh, Why don't you like familiars? I I mean, I see that 
if I understand what you're saying here, you hate them so much you won't even spell their name properly. <laughs> yeah. I oh, did I spell it wrong? Matter of fact, yes, I did. <laughs> when they got out, the people will not understand because it'll be fixed by the time they see the show notes. But thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two of them, uh, one is a druid who is also took some wizards so he could he could have a familiar. And then the other is a wizard. And they were using their familiar to uh, help them cast the inflict damage spell because your your familiars can basically cast whatever spell you're casting. They can also cast it because you kind of cast through them. Right. And inflict damage in 5e is insanely overpowered. And they oh, were... <laughs> Whatever I was throwing at them, they were just like ripping through because of that stupid inflict damage. So I hate clerics and I hate familiars. <laughs> Especially clerics that have familiars. Have familiars, exactly. God, don't give my other friend any ideas for our Curse of Strahd campaign or he'll get her familiar. <laughs> and then the well, other thing. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just, yes, but the first time they try confl- uh, casting inflict damage onto a undead they're gonna have a problem right well this is true that is my only saving grace for my curse of strat campaign okay. doesn't help in the storm king's thunder but okay i'll figure out some way to take care of those stupid familiars i'm i'm i'll i'll get them yet i will it's my new goal now the okay. only, only other thing i did uh gaming wise is i guess this kind of counts as gaming i read the instruction booklet for impact city roller derby Okay. Which you may have remembered, we talked about that Kickstarter not long ago. They actually sent me a copy uh, to review. So okay. uh, we'll have a review up soon. I read the instruction booklet, so I guess I kind of gamed because I read a gaming book. <laughs> well, that counts. I'll go with it. So how about you, Pine Leaf? What were you up to this week? All right. Uh, we'll begin what we did together in DDO, where we went to Lord's March Plaza and the Twelve. They sort of blend in together a little bit. And while we were there, we got mired in some kobolds, and yeah, that 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 was ouch. <laughs> uh, and, only a only a mommy dragon. It it wasn't that bad. Well, okay. Oh, only a, <laughs> well, actually, even those kobolds were a little bit ouchy at a couple of points. In yeah, that. yeah, they were. Those uh, the spellcasters. Were... Yeah, yeah, yeah ripping me to shreds and i think you as well but right. well and and it didn't help that you were like i'm a rogue so i don't do ranged i guess i need to get like a bow just so i can like do some ranged because right now i'm purely a melee rogue so there was a bunch of stuff that was up high and i'm like yours finally all yours good luck right. i'm gonna go stand back here and hide yeah <laughs> and then i was also running we also ran Diplomatic Impunity and Framework, so therefore we were planning some rock-solid evidence. And I think this is the first one that we ran where the Dimension Door that I finally took came in handy. <laughs> yes, yes it did, because I remember yeah. I asked you, I'm like, you took D-Door, right? Right, yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> Use it, yes, let's get <laughs> out of here. Now. Right. I love the- D-Door. Right. <laughs> then we then in Minecraft I completed two projects that I had pending on me. One was the a tunnel that I was creating through the zoo and also a sorting system I was having. So I finally completed those projects. So yes, yeah, something's finished. Yay! <laughs> I played several games of Octodice, which I had some good scores and some not too good scores. I did once get 40. I get, when got 141, and I think 40 is a good score to go for, but boy, it's tough to get 40 points in that game. And then I tried playing a relatively new game called Cthulhu, a deck-building game. And this game, it makes me finally understand what Tom Vassell means when he refers to something as a Kickstarter special. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This game manages to do something that no other Cthulhu game I've seen manages to achieve. It not only fulfills the dictionary's first definition of the word horrible, which is the less commonly used one, but it also fulfills completely the second definition of it, which is some people are more familiar with. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's harsh. Yeah, that's, I'll put it this way. There is on the box a 
one of the side panels of the box where it says, do you dare open this box? And my suggestion is, don't. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, what's even worse is the don't, do you dare open this box is only visible, is on then when the inner covers, you know, on, on the lid that's on the bottom lid that you can only see after you open it. Yeah. So it's already open. When you see the saying, do you dare open this box? <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, one reviewer actually said that is it's the only game he's ever seen that not only tests the sanity of your characters, but it also tests the sanity of the players. Wow. <laughs> yes. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's not exactly what you call the top ten were a top ten worthy game. Yes. <laughs> uh, apparently not highly recommended by Pine Leaf. <laughs> apparently not the highly recommended by Pine Leaf. Yes. We currently have 23 supporters on Patreon. If you would like to help support DDO players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you will find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or even be a guest with us for an episode of DDO Players News. By supporting us on Patreon, you'll help us with our hosting costs associated with running the podcast and websites. Uh, we don't have any reviews this week, and no featured comments, and not even any emails. But if you would like to send us an email, you can send it to podcast at ddoplayers.com. You can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Draculetta at Draculetta underscore 72, and Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles. The Players Alliance has four live shows. Every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News. Every Thursday at 9 p.m. ish U.S. Eastern Eastern Time, we have XP Quest. Every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lojo Players News. And on the last Friday of each month at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lojo Academy After School. You can join us for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that is it for our show this week. And this is Pineleaf Needles reminding you to quest responsibly.